Haverford West Central Mosque presents The Life of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in 20 stories for children. I am a dove. I'm a soft, gentle bird. When I was alive, you'd see me flying in the glorious blue skies of Arabia, looking down in wonder on all of Allah's creations. I lived a long, long time ago, in the times of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. I could fly far and wide. I could have chosen anywhere to be my home, but I chose Mecca. I chose its markets, its pathways, and its mountains. Some days, you would find me flying around the Kaaba. Some days, I would land on its grounds and walk in the courtyard and peck from the grains that people would leave for me to eat. I didn't need to fear anybody, and nobody needed to fear me. One beautiful sunny morning, as I flew over Mecca, looking for somewhere safe to lay my eggs, I noticed something very unusual. The people of Mecca, the Quraysh, they were behaving very strange. Some of them were pointing at each other, anger on their faces. Others were running to their horses and their camels. I saw men arming themselves with swords and shields, as if getting ready for battle. I tried to listen in to what they were saying. I heard they were very angry that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, had slipped away from them. You see, they had planned to kill him in Mecca, but he had gotten away and was on his way to safety in Medina. But they weren't going to let him make fools of them, so they were rushing to prepare their fastest horses, their most skillful hunters, to track down the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and to bring him back, dead or alive. On seeing this, I became very scared for the Prophet, peace be upon him. I had to help him. I had to make sure he was safe. But what could I do? Me, a dove, against an army of men. I began flying around Mecca, around its perimeter. I flew north on the way to Medina, looking for any sign of the Prophet, peace be upon him. But there was nothing. I flew east. I flew west. But still nothing. And so I flew south. And there, far away, until I could see two dots moving high up in the mountains. I flew closer, and I recognized the two men. It was the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his best friend and closest companion, Abu Bakr, radiallahu anhu. They were heading to a little cave in the mountains, the cave of Thawr, and they both looked very tired. I guess they were looking for a safe place to rest and sleep. I swooped down and landed on a ledge just above the opening of the cave where I saw a spider watching the events very carefully too. What's going on? Who are these two men approaching? asked the spider. It is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companion Abu Bakr, I replied. They are being hunted by the Quraysh of Mecca and they're on their way to Medina, where they'll be safe. Why have they been forced out of Mecca? asked the spider. Because Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the final prophet of Allah, the final messenger. He was sent with the religion of Islam. He was sent to call the people of Mecca and the whole world to believe in Allah alone to rescue them from a terrible punishment in the hereafter and to guide them to a wonderful reward in paradise. He tells his people that if you really love Allah, then follow me and Allah will love you and forgive you. He was driven out because of this, said the spider. We must help him. We need to keep him safe. Is he being followed? You're able to fly long distances. Quick, see if there's anyone on his tail. With that, I flapped my wings and rose into the air and began to search. 
I must have flown for miles and miles. But it was just as the spider had suspected. There was a band of men tracking the Prophet, peace be upon him. They had made their way into the mountain and they were getting dangerously close to the cave where the Prophet, peace be upon him, and Abu Bakr were resting. I flew back in panic to where the spider was waiting. There is a group of men from Quraysh. They are armed with swords and spears. They are heading for the Prophet wasallam, and they are getting closer. The spider became silent. I could see him thinking. I know, he said. I could weave a web across the entrance of the cave. It would close it off. That's not going to stop them from getting in. You're right, said the spider. It won't stop them from getting in, but it will make it look like no one has entered the cave in a very, very long time. What a great idea, I thought. It was genius. It could actually work. And so I decided that I could build a nest right over the entrance to the cave. I could lay my eggs in that nest. Any hunter searching for the prophet would think no one could have passed by this way for a very long time. So we got to work straight away. I flew here and there, collecting twigs and weeds. As for the spider, he began weaving a very complicated and beautiful pattern surrounding the opening of the cave. As soon as the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and his best friend and companion Abu Bakr were settled inside the cave, it wasn't long before the enemies of the Prophet, peace be upon him, reached the cave of Thawr as well. We could see them huddling around the opening of the cave, trying to peer inside through the spider's web to see if there were any signs of the Prophet, peace be upon him. The men began talking amongst themselves. They must have entered this cave. I don't think so. Looks like it's filled with serpents and snakes. I think we should go in. I don't. What about you? What do you think? Looks dark and scary. Why would anyone want to go in there? Does it look very comfortable? The men couldn't decide what to do. Well, what are we going to do then? Are we going in or not? We can't stand here all night. The spider and I held our breath as we watched the men study my nest and his web. Inside the cave, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, listened to the voices of the men in horror while the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam calmed his nerves and told him, Do not be afraid. Indeed, Allah is with us. The men continued to disagree and squabble until one of them came forward and took control. What's the point of entering this cave when it's obvious that no one has set foot in it for a very, very long time? How do you know that? Look, you see, a spider has woven his web across the opening. Look how thick it is. And if anybody had entered the cave, that web would have been broken. Of course. Also, you see that dove sitting on her eggs in her nest? If anyone would have passed by here, the dove would have flown away in fright and would have smashed her eggs. I'm certain no one has entered this cave for a very, very long time. You're absolutely right. They can't be here. Let's go. As the men turned around and walked away, further and further away from us, the spider and I began to feel a sense of relief. Once they had disappeared out of sight, I was so happy I flew out of my nest and clapped my wings with joy. We had helped the Prophet wasallam on his journey to safety, on his journey to Medina. I was the luckiest dove to have ever lived. People will tell my story and the story of my friend the spider until the end of time. The next day, after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu had rested, they got up to continue the rest of their journey. And I flew above them high in the sky, 
watching over them to make sure they were safe. Finally, I fluttered my wings and wished them well with all my heart and said goodbye.